Look, a bare hand. We sometimes lay our forehead on it when we feel tired. The envelope of the body, a living border between the inside and the outside, between the wet and the dry. The skin is an assembly of regular cells. It's covered with a network of furrows and plateaus. The translucent spheres are drops of sweat which have reached the surface through pores. The skin thus evolves, breathes and perspires, getting rid of certain wastes of the body. This tormented landscape is our epidermis, magnified 150 times. Within it, the layers of cells are in constant renewal. Cells are already dead when they reach the surface, disposed of and replaced by others produced in deeper layers. Here's a hair, magnified 180 times. Its root, invisible on the screen, loses itself in the epidermis. A slight cut, this grey area at the centre of the image, allows us to distinguish the various cell layers that constitute the epidermis. As we move deeper, we come across living cells whose nucleus we can sometimes distinguish, those regular bubbles we can see at the bottom of the screen. Above, flat cells, emptied of their content, constitute the upper layer of the epidermis. Within these, we find a very resistant protein, keratin, which can also be found in hair and nails and teeth. Here we are now at the heart of the epidermis. The membranes form a protective waterproof barrier. For this very purpose, they're joined together by something like a press stud, this dark crescent at the center of the image. Yet we can also see how they're arranged in lipid layers placed side by side, limiting exchanges with the outside. Our microscope has unfortunately now reached its limits. Beyond this, nothing more is visible for the moment.